sure be out of your vision, midwife, and I am on the birthing chair with the famous, infamous Alicia Way. Say hey to the visionary. How y'all doing out there? It's Alicia Way. It's a pleasure to be here. It is. You know, we've been trying to make this happen for how long now? Probably uh, uh, almost a year. I think we've been pushing almost a year, so I got a text. He said, tonight's the night. I said, let's make it happen. So we are here at his show. In the name of the show, let's look at this shirt you have on. Locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. You know the locked and loaded uh, show tonight at uh, 3 and 1 Cafe. Tell us what this is about. Well, locked and loaded is just about um, painting the dreadheads in a positive light. Sometimes dreadheads can get a bad rap. But there are some dreadheads out there that love God, that love their family. Amen, amen. Uh, Hardworking uh, men, so sometimes we get a bad rap, and I'm just out here to paint a better picture for the dreadheads. The dreadheads. So what that means, guys? Because I've I've been peeping the scene. So that means basically everybody performing tonight has dreads. Is that right? That, that's right. Right. So that 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 it took me a minute, y'all. Cause you know I'm a little slow sometimes. Locked. That means your hair is locked and you're loaded with the blood of Jesus. Hey, loaded with hey, the word. That's what that on. means. So I want to talk to you, Alicia, because you have made some huge strides, strides and transitions. Most of you may remember Alicio from Trill. Trill. T R E A L. Yes, they had a song that was very famous. They bumped it in all of the clubs everywhere. Yeah. I am not locked down with yeah. a number one hit yeah. all over the world. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about that because at one point you were signed with the label. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Trill, T R E A L. We from Orlando, Florida. Uh, went to Jones High. All of us went to Jones High. Shout out to Jones High. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And we after we got out of school, we just kind of put a group together yes. and uh, just started making music. And, uh, you know, with the hand to God, it just kind of blew up, you know, and uh, we was, got signed to Universal Records, and uh, we traveled a lot, um, you know, California, New York, uh, and, and it just, you know, his plan wasn't for us to stay on that uh, label, so, you know, we kind of all doing our own thing now, and I'm doing positive music now, and it's a beautiful thing, so. Let's talk about that positive music, because, you know, so much of hip-hop is, is so... Not positive. Let's just go there. It talks about women. It talks about money and sex and drugs. But you've decided to do something different. What was that point where you said, I got to be able to bring something else to Well, it's when I realized what impact music had on people. Like, I, when I made I'm Locked Locked Down, um, it really hit me with that song because I actually wrote that song getting out of a long term relationship of like six years. So I wrote the song, I'm Not Locked Down. It was a real song to me. I wasn't locked down no more. I was hurt. Even though I sounded like I'm having fun in the song, I was actually hurt. And then when I dropped that song, a lot of people, I had people in my inbox, even married women who was like, got divorced after 10, 20 years of marriage. Wow. And they was like, you know, if it wasn't for not locked down, I probably would have committed suicide. Wow. Uh, so yeah, wow. I, I literally had a, got a couple of those kind of inboxes. So then it hit me, it's like, man, music has a huge impact on people. Um, it don't necessarily have to be music about singing about God or anything like that, but just positive music that infuses positivity to, into the community. So when I came into that realization, and, and then coupled with my church, my, my bishop, she uh, basically showed me the spiritual side of music and how it can heal people uh, mentally and spiritually. So uh, then I just prayed about it, and God was like, you know, um, I want you to do positive music and just kind of help people in, in the community. So that's what I do now. So cool. Absolutely. So, so what was that transition like, though? Because... When you were doing Trill, I'm sure you had thousands and thousands of followers and people that, that loved your music and supported you. But when you made that tradition, uh, transition, did you see that there were some issues where people fell off and people just weren't really feeling it? Or what was going on yeah, with that? Absolutely. I mean, when you in one arena and you're known for club music, club music, you know, crank music, and that's what you're known for. And, you know, I want to take, I I take those days back for nothing in the world because I learned a lot with Trill. I learned right, a lot. Right. I love them boys, I love my brothers. To this day, Trill can get back together to this day. It's just that we all have families now, we're busy, so it's kind of tough with different schedules. But, you know, when I started doing positive music, it was very humbling. I was, I'm already, I already consider myself to be a humble dude, but it was very humbling because it's like I started from the bottom again. You know, when yeah, we started yeah. Trill, we made Inner Orange County and it blew up. Then we made Don't Worry About Mine, it blew up. We didn't have like that growth stage where we had to ramp up. It was just like, we went to the club, it started playing, it started banging. With my music now, it's like everybody don't really want to hear positive music or a positive message. So now you all would climb up, and I'm climbing up there, but it's humbling. And I understand that God has me doing this more, more for than just money or status or fame or anything like that. I'm doing it for Him, and I'm doing it to serve the community, and I'm doing it for people. So it's not necessarily about the money, but it's, it's, it's a humbling process. Now tell us what we can expect to see from you. You said you're doing positive music. You have some um, music that's out currently. Can we expect to see a CD dropping soon? And, and what's going on with Lock and Loaded? Is it a tour you're doing? Yeah. Talk to us about what 
what's to come. So what you can expect from me, basically, I, I always do a single. I try to do a single every quarter, and I always try to do a nice music video for it. You can go to AliciaWayMusic.com, and you can download all my music for free. I do a lot of prisons and juvenile detention centers, so the only way they can get the music is if it's available for free. So they don't got no options wow. or nothing like that. So a lot of people, like, you know, they like, why you... Put your music out for free. It's good music. You can sell wow. it. But like I said, it's not necessarily about the money. It's about access and the, the yes. children. And yes. these, these sometimes these convicted felons who, who ain't coming home. They got a, a, a life bed that they can get the music in it. And I get right. you know, letters of these music songs helping them out in, in prison and things like that. So you can go download the music for free. Uh, locked and loaded. Um, I don't know. Whatever God do with it. That's the first one. I, I've already got people reaching out from other cities that want to do it. So for the dreadheads over there. So if, if that's what God want to take it, then by all means, we'll go do it. You know what I'm talking about? Let's talk about that a little bit. Because we're not going to run past that like he just said he don't have his music for free. So that the people, because you, you don't think about that. You don't yeah. really think about who your music impacts and how you make it accessible for them. Yeah. And so I'm saying that to the visionary so you can understand that. You know, you might not be a rapper, but you have something that God is giving you. Yeah. And so sometimes we want to make sure we got a price because we're thinking about the profit. Yeah. But we don't think about the people we're serving. Hey. That's all right. And so you said you do yours for free. Yeah. His, his music is for free. Yeah. So that the people who need to access it can access it. You can't help but get blessed in that. Well, I mean, even with Trill, a lot of people don't understand. Trill, what we would do, how we blew up, is we would go downtown every Friday and we would pass out hundreds of CDs. It was these right here. We were passing these out. It was free. We did that for a couple of years. The next thing you know, we was on the radio. We was getting flown all across the country. That's right. People were like, how y'all did that? We are like, we gave the music out for free. So why you worried about necessarily making 99 cents on iTunes? But think about it. It's more valuable for you to put it out for free, let hundreds of people get it for free, than to put it on iTunes and maybe 10 people download it. Y'all just downloaded. got a little tidbit of knowledge so, yeah. right so, there. I mean, all you aspiring artists, he just gave y'all some knowledge. Don't be right to pass the knowledge. Get that vision vitamin. Take some of that right there because people oh, yeah. need to hear that. We get so consumed with the money and the financial um, reward of it that we don't realize that everything is in place. And what, another thing you said that I like is action. You took action. You said you were down there hustling your CD. Yeah, yeah. You, you weren't sitting back just saying I'm going to blow up and Facebook yeah, it. Yeah. They might not have had Facebook, but we had MySpace to talk But you weren't just sitting back just saying, yeah. well, I'm going to wait for it to come to me. You got out there and did yeah. what you wanted, what you needed to do in order to get to where God was moving you to at that time. Absolutely. What I, what I did in the world, I'm doing for the kingdom. I'm doing the same format. Getting out here and uh, burning these CDs, getting them out of these hands, and going to these prisons, juvenile detention centers. And I just came from last weekend to uh, Coleman Prison, uh, Federal Penitentiary. Yes, he did. I and, saw that on the uh, you know, I was at the women's center, and uh, I, I kid you not, man, the women in there, you know, they got all they got, is, all of them got a great story, but I, I couldn't help but to break out in tears when I seen how, how much they, you know, you in unison. Like, I, you know, of course, they don't have no choice but to be in unison out there right. in prison. But, you know, but it, it just, like I said, it's very passionate. So I tell y'all all, get out there and see the world, man. Help people. As long as you doing what you love to do and you trying to help people, then even if you do it for free right now, God will make sure that you get blessed with it in the end. Amen. Amen. I was going to ask him to give a vision by me, but I think that was a real good one. So if you have anything, if, if you can tell one thing to a visionary who is at that point to where they're feeling like it's not going to move, it's not, God has called them to do them, but they're not moving in it. What is the one advice you would give a visionary? Why can you be ready to give up today? I would say, um, get out and see the world and, and get in front of different people. Uh, the Bible tells us that, you know, probably not, you know, have no honor in his hometown. So even right now, ah, know, a lot of wait people, a minute. Uh, yes. a lot of people don't necessarily vibe with me, um, here in Orlando. Like I, like I literally sent out personal invites to a lot of my high school classmates, college classmates, and none of them are here. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, do I get discouraged? No. Um, I just go, I go to other places. I, I visit other cities and you know, when you go there, you're like a whole gold mine to them. Right. So I would say just get in front of different, uh, demographic, different people who you're not familiar with. Uh, the spirit of familiarity will have you all depressed. You know what I'm saying? Right, you right. Get in front of different people. So that would be my only advice. Get out and see the world. That was some powerful, that was a powerful thing that he gave you. Powerful vision vitamin. You are absolutely right. That sometimes, even when I do my videos and stuff, I notice that I get support from people who I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. And my friends and family on Facebook, faithfully, they don't watch it. And it's not that they don't want to support. Yeah. Sometimes they just can. Yeah, just but when, when you go outside of your comfort zone, God will make sure that those people will come and support you. So we're going to wrap it up because they sound like they get crunk and I'm ready to go in there. So thank you for watching. Thank you, Lisa, your way for taking the time to see us. And remember that if God's giving it to you, He'll bring the provision for you to have. Have a good night, Engineering. All right.